Hello, this is Rochelle. I'm headed back to court. Today, March 12, 2019, for a 215 apparent after being served in order to come yesterday, which I appeared, but they told me to leave. Deputy cereal. So I just like you spell the word cereal. The food. Um gave me a paper telling me to come in today at 2.15. Now I'm suspecting that they're trying to say that I defaulted by not showing and are trying to attempt to falsely imprison me again. Now I was there. I called the Unified Court System at 617 315-617-2111. And I spoke to the representative there for the ADA disability people, right? Letting them know that I'm in fear of my safety imminently and that someone needs to come and oversee Judge Hainsack, who I am suing and who is my the perpetrator I'm reporting. So she's telling me that they take this seriously and they're gonna call the court guards to make sure that, you know, I'm safe. So I have to do the same thing today. Email, internet fax, and phone call reporting for my safety because my children should have been returned. They are still kidnapped in Oklahoma State and being illegally held by Walter Newman on order of Michael Hainsack perpetrating man acting as judge so that's what I'm doing today um, prayers needed for my safety that this matter be handled justly righteously pray that I obtain proper counsel advisories and people that will for you know get some movement here <laughs> the attorneys that I've had have been tipped up Tip top putting their foot in, trespassing against my case, injuring me and my children further because they wanted to be friends to the court and gain clout, making an example out of me. But it's all right. I will rejoice in these struggles because I don't believe this is gonna ever happen again to me. <laughs> I think I'm gonna set some precedents and shake some ground and prevent the next you know Rochelle um, from going through this so that's all I can say I will rejoice in this faith and hope I love you <sighs> also another update Lisa Blitman keep coming to my house with her fictitious altered forged documents lure me in the court for some fake custody battle that I have so custody of my kids so how is she arguing me for custody claiming Walter Newman that's not in this state forged some documents or made some documents he's not they're not even signed all right they can't even do stuff smart but okay they don't believe that I'm going to be heard and justice is going to ring in my favor it has already they're just not compliant so anybody that can get in touch with any compliance people, the governor, please send them my way. I've been bugging and bugging and bugging people and contacting people, the ICPC people in New York State. And I'm going to continue to, you know, be a squeaky wheel for my children, Faith and Hope, who I spoke to a few days ago. And for Lisa Blitman to write that my kids don't want to come and for anyone to hear a phone call of me and my children's interaction the first thing came out of their mouth is why can't we come home okay the first thing came out of their mouth after me trying to see if they can hear me because you can tell they're far away from the phone someone's controlling the phone you know so it's all right and it's painful to call and they are hostile to my children so I try to be not call as much because of the August event where my, my daughter got shot into a door France on the phone and um, yeah that was hard to take 
and for Judge Hingsack to just sit there and say, just send a picture. He didn't care. Police didn't do a well child check. That's just, you know, and I don't want to subject, subject my kids to any harm by me calling. So that's where we're at right now. Kids are still not home. I went to court this year, February 15th. And told me to come back basically two weeks later. Um, and that's what I'm doing. Coming back to court. Coming back to court. I have not defaulted. This case wasn't legal. So there's no way I could default on something. You take my shoes or my property and then say, come meet me down the street. And if I don't show for my safety, you can't say I defaulted. You did a crime. Your ass should have been in jail. The police came in and took my children and property. They should have been assholes to return them. And then giving me letters saying that they wronged me and tainted the record. I should have been immediately afforded an instant appeal where they could have got my kids to me. They haven't done that. And then the letter that I submitted and posted where the public defender, Hitchcock Legal Aid, attorney is admitting they lied to me tainted the record saying I lost when I what them I did I was there I know what they said so that being said um instant appeal should have been granted when I requested and insisted that my instant appeal be motion Mr. Philip Rothschild refused talk big smack over the phone so him and then, yeah, yeah, Blackaby were conflicted. And I told him, I said, if you have a conflict, you need to remove yourself. Obviously, there is. If you can't do something that you're required to do, that was within your scope of your duties. I'm going to ask you something hard to do. It's probably already been done because usually when you have a hearing, the lawyers go in before you, especially because it's out of my, my, out of my area. And they do it. So for all I know, the incident appeal has happened. But they are just letting it go. And then my attorney, supervising attorney for Hitchcock Legal Aid Public Defender, talking more smack, talking about you've let the case go on. How in the hell did I let this case go on when I've been the one bugging people, sending information to the authorities? And now, obviously, I touched a nerve where I get Onondaga County admitting that they wronged me in letter form. So I didn't let anything go on. So... That's where I'm at. The lawyers at Hitchcock Legal Aid need to be shut down, um, restaffed, rehired. They have Linda Garrett there, who I did a claim against because the first removal of my children, you know, I'm down, didn't know too much anything, but I knew to ask for my rights. I want to know what my rights are in the matter so that way I know what to ask for, what to, how to speak. She's delaying, didn't want to give it to me. Didn't want to give me this is a printout of what you can do, what, you, what your rights are. That's all I ask. I want to know, I want to be advised of my rights. She's like hesitant, hesitant, hesitant. Has me in a room, her and um, Nancy Farrell. Nancy Farrell's talking big shit. Now you can tell me you got big time lawyers because even the judge kind of sat up when Linda Garrett came in the courtroom. So I said, okay, I got good lawyers. I'm thinking that I was going to get appropriate counsel, advisement, and justice they came onto my case I think in August of 2016 yeah August July or August 2016 so I get them and we're in the office Nancy Farrell leaves after talking smack to me every time I ask just normal questions about the case and tell my story she shut me up being real aggressive and I'm just sitting here trying to make sense of it because they're supposed to be here for you so they should want to hear your side you're supposed to be afforded time to give your testimony but every time I spoke it would strike strike a nerve and she would like you know jump you know jumping at me like she's about to pop, pop off so I'm looking at her because I'm confused my heart is heavy I'm trying to get my kids I'm trying to not speak but speak the, the, my truth. So she leaves because she had to go to a hearing. So she leaves. 
Now me and Linda Garrett is in there. The lights are low. I don't know what the fuck was that about? But all right, the office is low. And you know, I'm damn near teary-eyed. And I'm like, I didn't do anything. This isn't right. So I actually got signed. I need to know what my rights are. What are my rights? Please give me my rights. Give me my rights. So I kept talking. Okay, well, as she's sitting on the computer, kind of stiff faced it, quiet typing. And she said, Well, you know they're gonna go harder once you know your rights. And I'm like, okay. So she prints it out, gives me one sheet of form with like six or seven um rights. I have a right not to let them, I have a right to refuse. I, I mean everything that I've done was my right, but I've been punished by. So uh that, that's the problem. So she gives me this, and then she's like, Well, I'm so sorry. You're not gonna get your kids back. This is Linda Garrett now, okay? The, one of the tip top attorneys. She's the head over Hitchcock Legal Aid here in Syracuse, New York. You're not gonna get your kids back. You know, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sad to hear it. You're gonna get your kids back. So I'm sitting there like, why is she saying this? How the fuck can she say this? How is she? She's not the judge. She's supposed to be my counsel. But she starts talking like that, laying the fuck back in her chair with her legs cocked open. And I'm shaking my head, fuck. Like, my mouth is. <laughs> I'm like, fuck no. I'm not eating nobody's pussy. I don't give a fuck. So after that, I got the fuck up at that bitch's office and I had to deal with it. So from August till October, October 20th, I won my fucking kids back. Won my case. My lawyer, I got assigned to William Baldolf. Okay? So that was late July. I got him like August 1st. He was an asshole from day one. There's no religion in that man. I don't care what faith he is. And I got referred to him. And that man is not religious is all he see the devil ain't got a church too that gotta be a fact um so him and his wife i don't recommend them to be in the general public especially dealing with families because they are animals and they would devour your children that is a fact if you don't believe me look at my record it is for the public you are the public you are the people you should be looking into these matters people sit here and let the news tell you what's going on but you can just go on pacer.gov dot com whatever and go look it up yourself there's no reason not to know in these times so that's all i got to say about that that is my testimony i affirm certify subscribe to it under penalty of perjury perjury and if you don't believe me I, i'm gladly willing to take a, a lot of technical tests will they will they so whether it's inadmissible or not i am telling the god honest truth the record with the omissions of me being affirmed I ain't got nothing else to say. Time for compliance. Let's go. Book them, Danny. <laughs> Faith and hope, I love you. Eduardo, I love you. God bless all the little children who've been affected by these evildoers. Godspeed. Rochelle from Cuse, New York. Judge Haney said, here you go.